So Bloons Cardstorm has been out for two weeks, and it's not looking too good. There are really multiple problems with this game currently, but the main concern here is the player count. At least according to the Steam analytics, more than half of all the players have already left. Not even Bloons TD Battles 2 had it this bad during its first two weeks, but that still isn't to excuse the fact that its launch was horrendous due to the countless bugs the game had. That is not this case. This game had a few closed beta sessions before public launch to stamp out all that, and that is how Battles 2 should have been as well, and I've stated this fact multiple times before. While Steam isn't the only way to play the game, it is the best indicator that we have access to that gives us an idea of how the player base stands compared to earlier times. There are far more mobile players out there, and it tends to follow a similar trajectory. The game is still too new though, so these figures aren't reflected there yet. It also doesn't help that it only shows the peak players there and not the average like what Steam has. This is a warning sign though of what is yet to come, so if you are checking the player statistics on a mobile device, do expect a significant drop in player counts, possibly even an 80% drop or more. Also, if you haven't done so already, open your game and be sure to use promo code LAUNCHGOALS. This offer expires soon, so don't miss it. Now this isn't to say that the game is completely done for, yet. Ninja Kiwi still has time to fix that, and as of this recording, a new patch just dropped a few days ago to rebalance some of the overpowered cards, so you won't be experiencing what I had to in this game that you're seeing here. There are still many cards that need balancing, and Ninja Kiwi won't be going on holiday vacation for over a month, so they can definitely do more card tweaks in the meantime. Even with that being said though, that is only going to help so much. What about daily rewards? There are none. At least no guaranteed free ones anyway. Some players have the option to watch an ad to earn 100 monkey money, which is a pretty good amount. That's right, the daily reward is bugged, and at first I thought maybe it was only available after making an in-app purchase based on the chats I have had in the Discord servers that I'm in. However, once I got on Reddit and mentioned this, even some paid users don't have the daily reward either. Beyond that, I'd say the reward system is actually not too bad especially with the latest added feats to make the grind less of a slog fest, at least for someone who is currently affected by the bug myself, but really for the most part it comes down to RNG from the daily shop, which can be quite annoying when the meta in question involves a high rarity card, like what we just experienced. Still, when it comes to the later game, the feat rewards feel underwhelming, and I hope more feats are added out there to address that problem in the future. As for the RNG in the game, I don't really have too much to speak of, for someone who has had a growing interest in TCGs in recent years, and that's why I haven't really talked about it too much. It's built into these types of games, so to me, I see this as trying to work with what you have in your hand each time, and it tests you on less comfortable situations if you have bad card luck. It is a letdown when it happens, and believe me, I have that happen to me a few times myself when playing in duels, but just remember that it's built into a game like this in real life, unless, of course, your opponent chooses to cheat. I'm starting to veer off topic here, and I feel that I've been missing the elephant in the room this entire time, the campaigns. Now, I understand this game is new, and the launch was delayed quite a bit from its original target, although not as much as what BTD6 was like, but the concern still comes up that this game is basically released in an unfinished state. There are only four campaigns in the entire game, with one only being accessible by spending monkey money to unlock Amelia or buying one of her bundles in the shop. The other campaigns are short and don't offer too much of a challenge, if at all, mostly because the AI is garbage as always. Personally, the only stage that is challenging to me in the slightest is the Amelia fight in the prologue campaign, and once you figure out her deck, it's easy to beat her even with the gimmicks working against you. I played another Ninja Kiwi game several years ago that I have videos on my channel called Tower Keepers, and I felt that it had a similar problem to this game, though thankfully it didn't involve campaigns being locked behind a paywall. To make up for this shortfall, they have campaigns that rotate every other day to keep the game fresh, as well as competitive events such as weekly catacombs and monthly wizard tower, and I think this game could massively benefit from such a change. There is already talks about ranked mode coming in the near future, so that's something to look forward to at least, and it may use a similar model to these. But yes, having rotating campaigns would help with increasing deck variety, as it does get boring doing the same fight over and over again and winning most of the time. Maybe it's too early to write off Bloom's Cardstorm as a failure, 
but with how everything is going with the game so far, its future seems bleak, and I sincerely hope that I am wrong with this prediction.